I just came across an article in Bloomberg News that made me literally laugh out loud. It's called, America Needs Higher, Longer-Lasting Inflation, and Here's Why. It's written by some guy named Carl Smith. It's actually been reprinted a bunch of places. And it's part of an elaborate media effort to now try to, you may say, cover up or justify the failures of the Biden administration. You might remember uh, just a few days ago on social media, the uh, Washington Post had an article about how let's not complain about the breakdown of these supply chains. Let's not um, complain about the fact that this or that product is no longer available. You can't get it. It's a week-long wait or month-long wait. Their point is, let's just lower our expectations. So this is this is really life as lived in a country moving in a socialist direction. You just have to get used to less. You've got to get used to bad news. The good news is when the bad news isn't so bad. And um, this uh, article is a perfect example of this. Uh, the guy goes on to make a kind of crazy kook argument where he, in a sense, says that, listen, the great advantage of inflation, he says, is that, um, you know, right now when interest rates are really low, if the Federal Reserve needs to lower them further, there's not much place to go. I mean, there's only, you know, you can just go down to zero. You can't go below that. So he goes, if inflation's higher, it gives the Fed a little bit more room to operate. Imagine a, imagine a person, a seemingly serious person, arguing for inflation on the grounds that it gives the Fed more tools to tinker with the money supply. The Fed, by the way, the primary cause of inflation in the first place. Why? By printing money. Printing money, by and large, to bankroll the projects of the Biden administration. So they're essentially imposing a silent tax on the American people. Uh, if something that costs $100 um, uh, now costs $110, well, that basically means that you're going to have to pay more for it. Another way to look at it is your paycheck just took a cut, uh, even without the government actually taking a literal bite out of that uh, paycheck. We're facing not just the prospect of inflation. Inflation is actually bad enough, but inflation combined with slow growth. Now, slow growth plus inflation is called stagflation. Stagnant plus inflation gives you stagflation. I don't know if you remember that term from the 1970s. Stagflation was last given to us by another Democrat, Jimmy Carter. It ground the economy to a halt. This is really the main domestic problem that Reagan inherited. On the foreign policy front, the Soviet Union, yes. But on the domestic front, stagflation, a very painful um, problem to deal with. And in fact, it took a deep recession to get America out of this pit that the Democrats had dug us into. And they're, de they're doing it again. In a way, inflation has been something that we have successfully tackled really for almost 30 years. But now it's almost uh, as if we're back to the 1970s. We've seen the biggest 12-month um, rise in prices and inflation uh, really since August of 2008, before the financial crisis basically sent the economy into a, into a tailspin. Now, the Federal Reserve, which has been predicting 2% inflation, which is, by the way, less than half of the over 5% inflation rate we're looking at, the Fed goes, well, you know, we're, we're kind of hoping that this is going to be sort of temporary. But it's very clear month after month as the numbers come in that this is not really temporary. This is something we're going to have to live with. And remember, that was the point of this article. It's trying to get us used to living with inflation and as a normal part of our of our life. In other words, this kind of government theft of people's spending power is now supposed to be a normal. Just get used to it. Stop complaining about it. Uh, gas prices, by the way, are up 42% over a year ago. Think about that. Think about that for people. And by the way, this burden falls more heavily on Republicans. Why? Because Republicans tend to live not concentrated in the inner cities, but in more rural areas, they travel longer distances. And so who do you think pays the price when gas prices soar like this? Um, used car prices are up almost 25% from a year ago. Food prices jumped 1.2% in September alone. So that extrapolated out uh, is, a, is a substantial um, in, uh, inflation rate. And so 
All of this, uh, all these failures can be pointed not to COVID, not to some inevitable uh, globalization breakdown, but to the policy failures of the Biden administration. By the way, it's kind of disgusting to see that Pete Buttigieg, who was supposed to be managing this supply chain crisis, is on has taken a two month maternity leave. So this guy doesn't show up for meetings. He doesn't take calls. Uh, he's really not working. And um and the media is acting like, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, shouldn't he be also entitled to maternity leave? Well, I mean, you're you're the point man in, uh, first of all, there's an infrastructure bill. You're supposedly the point man on infrastructure. You're also the point man with these supply chains. And you're nowhere to be found. You're posting, you know, pictures uh, of you, you know, doodling on a swing uh, with your partner. So this is a um, this is an embarrassing situation that is. Um, that is having a real world effect on ordinary people, pinching them, making their lives more difficult. And uh, so if you're looking for someone to blame, well, they're all sitting right there in Washington, D.C.